All right, welcome students. Uh, today we're going to talk about time value of money. And today is the time value of money introduction on how money works and how money flows. And so the first thing when we look at finance and dealing with money, we're going to look at the two large overriding tenets of finance. The first one is that you'd rather have your money sooner rather than later. And so if you had the choice of having a dollar right now or a dollar five years from now, which one would you rather have? Certainly you'd rather have a dollar now because a dollar sitting in your pocket is worth a dollar. All right? But if you would rather have a dollar today instead of a dollar one day from now, then a dollar today must be worth more. And so the value has gone down. If you'd rather have your money one day from now versus one week from now, that means that the value of the money must go down farther. And if I told you, do you want me to give you a dollar a week from now, or do you want a dollar at the end of the semester? All right. Obviously, one week from now, you'd rather have it versus the end of the semester. And actually, if we look at the value of money, if I promise you a dollar, 30 years from now, that dollar is actually worth about three cents. And so when we look at money, the first overriding tenet of finance is a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. The sooner I get my money as I back up in time from 30 years from now to the end of the semester, from the end of the semester to one week, from one week from one day, from one day up to right now, our dollar is worth more and more and more. Um, sounds like a silly, obvious concept, but uh, it's one of the big tenets of finance. The second large overriding tenet of finance is that a safer dollar is worth more than a risky dollar. All things being equal, you want your money to be safe. And so the second main tenet of finance is that a safer dollar is worth more than a risky dollar. If we looked at what the safest investment in the world right now is, um, a lot of people might think it's gold. A lot of people might think it's you know uh, some foreign currency or something like that. But really, the world's safest investment right now is U.S. Treasuries. Um, the odds of the United States defaulting in the next year on its treasuries is incredibly low. And in fact, if the U.S. actually did default on any of its treasury bills, then more likely than not, all of Europe is defaulted, all of Southern um, America is defaulted, the world would just be in turmoil. So it is by far the safest investment. If we look at the basic tenet of the, the first one, a dollar today is worth a dollar. So if I had $1,000 in my pocket today, it would be worth $1,000. If I had a promise from the United States government in the form of a treasury bill to pay me $1,000 a year from now, because I'm not going to get that $1,000 for a year, it is going to be worth less for a U.S. treasury bill. Okay, so a $1,000 payment from the United States Treasury is still going to be worth less because I'd rather have $1,000 in my pocket now than $1,000 promised to me from the U.S. Treasury in one year. The discount rate right now on a U.S. Treasury is about 3%. So actually $1,000 owed to us from the U.S. Treasury is worth about $970. Okay, that's what we call the discount that we are going to apply to the U.S. Treasury. If we look for something slightly riskier, which means something that has a little bit less likelihood to pay, we could look at a lot of different companies. Um, the safest company, in my estimation right now, probably in the United States, 
the company the least likely to go bankrupt in the next year is probably Walmart. Walmart sells 40% of all the toothpaste in the world. Um, they're not tied to technology like Apple could be, whereas if someone came in with a massive innovation, could put lots of pressure on uh, Apple. So I think they're probably the safest investment. The uh, Walmart is trading at about a 5% discount. So if we looked at Walmart, that's trading at about $950. So a $1,000 promise from Walmart to pay $1,000 in one year is worth $950 today. If we then went on to maybe some riskier investments, one of the more risky uh, retail investments, similar to Walmart that's out there right now, is probably Kmart. Kmart has lots of structural problems. I don't think Kmart is going out of business this year, although five, eight years from now, not sure if they're going to be around. So because they're riskier, we are going to discount them more. They're probably running about a 12% discount, risk adjusted. So a $1,000 promise from Kmart is probably worth about $880. It certainly still has value. Odds are Kmart's going to pay off, but who knows. If we want to go even riskier than that, what we can do is just pick any random student in any of your classes and let's say that they owe you $1,000. Or maybe you think of your errant cousin in your family or something like that that's always borrowing money and they never pay you back. And the odds of you seeing your money are very low. So if we take a random student in class, certainly a lot of them aren't going to pay. Some are going to pay 500 bucks. Some are going to pay 200 Some in class will be able to pay the full $1,000. But a lot of them won't, so it's certainly very risky. So let's say that about 30% of all the students um, in class are able to pay back that debt. That'd mean you're running about a 70% default rate. Plus on top of that, we're gonna discount that a bit because of time value of money. We might end up with the random student being worth about $250. Okay. Certainly has value. So a lot of people are saying, well, you know, I wouldn't want it at all. It's not worth anything. Well, if I gave you a thousand dollar debt from every single student in class for free, you'd certainly take it. If you have 40 students, is it worth $40,000? Absolutely not. But if you got 40 students and each are worth, uh, say, 300 bucks or so, then maybe it's worth $12,000. If you've got uh, 40 students and each one is likely to pay you back maybe 300 bucks or $250, I'd probably pay $10,000 for it. Okay, and then we've got this company. I don't know if any of you remember who these people are. All right, some people might recognize that symbol. That's for Enron. Enron is the world's largest bankruptcy. They have still have a lot of debt out there the odds of them paying back are nothing. Um, you can go buy $1,000 worth of Enron debt and you will pay less than a penny for that debt. What this basically is is a lottery ticket. You're going to buy a million dollars worth of their debt. You're going to hope that they find uh, a bunch of missing money or some insurance company pays off a lot and they're able to pay off maybe 20 cents on the dollar. And so then you paid less than a penny for it. They get back 20 cents on the dollar. That's a huge, huge investment gain. Are they going to find the money? No, I don't think so. So basically, any debt from Enron is worthless. As we get safer and safer and safer, money's worth more. So a debt from Enron worth basically nothing. A debt from a random student in class? worth 250 bucks. Debt from Kmart, an ongoing concern business, is probably not going out of business now, but has some issues, worth 880. 
As we then get safer and move up to Walmart, 950. As we're at the safest investment in the world, U.S. Treasuries, 970. It still is less than $1,000, and the reason it's less than $1,000 is we're still, even with the U.S. Treasury, just getting paid a year from now, and so that's going to be discounted back to 970. All right, now what we want to do with time value of money is start looking at making investments. And what we need to determine here is if I invest a dollar today, so I've got money in my pocket and I want to invest it. If I deposit a dollar, I'm going to move that dollar out into the future. We call that the future value of a dollar. I also want to do some calculations for like annuities. Let's say I'm going to deposit $500 every single month for the next 25 years in my 401k account. Well, how much money am I going to have out in the future? That is called the future value of a dollar. I also might have someone who's promising me money out in the future. Right? Like Walmart's going to promise to pay me $1,000 in the future if I loan them some money. I want to be able to take that dollar out in the future because one of the basic tenets of finance is a dollar today is worth more. And so if I have $1,000 out here in the future, I'm going to do what's called discounting. I'm going to discount that money back using what's called the present value of a dollar. So we're going to get the answer here after discounting, and I know it's going to be less than 1000 I also might have several cash flows promised to me over time. This might be my retirement, where I'm getting paid $75,000 every year in retirement. It could be an insurance settlement, where they promise to pay me $5,000 a year, or some other string of investments that's coming my way. I want to be able to discount all of these back to today and get the current value of what that's worth right now. That is called the present value of an annuity. When we look at what an annuity is, right, it's kind of unique. An annuity is going to be equal cash flows. So 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, that is an annuity, all right? A non-annuity is a set of cash flows that are not equal. So a non-annuity would be something like 900, 1,000, 1,100. And so even though both of these equal $3,000, they have different values because the cash is coming to you at a different rate. So if I owed you $3,000, would you rather I paid you $1,000 here each year or $900 the first year, then $1,000, then $1,100? Certainly, I hope you're picking you'd want this one here because you get your money sooner. And so that way, the basic tenet of finance, the earlier you get your money, the more it's worth. When we did the calculation of this value, this one would be worth more. Now, annuities certainly aren't always worth more. If we just reverse this around and you got $1,100 in the first year and $900 in the second, now if I owed you $3,000, which would you rather have? Hopefully, you're picking this one here, the non-annuity. And you'd be picking the non-annuity because you get your money sooner so it has more value. Okay. So now that we've done a couple of those, let's get into our first problem. 